Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm John Cartwright, and today I'm joined by Spawnwave and Nate the Hate. Um, Spawn, you and I have the same name, so do we just call each other John, or what are we going to do here? You can, do, you can just call, call me Spawn just to split us up. All right. That's fun. <laughs> How yeah, are you, Spawn? I, I'm very excited. I'm ready to see what Microsoft's been cooking up for the past, I'm going to even say, few years with Halo Infinite and a few other games to launch this next-gen system. It's Phil Spencer's moment, right, Nate? This is it right here. It's all come down to this yeah. for Phil Spencer. This is this is Phil Spencer's flagship product. It's not being weighed down by Don Matrick. This is spearheaded fully by Phil Spencer. And I've told you time and time again, let's have faith in 343 and Halo Infinite. And okay. it's time for them to deliver. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for it then. For me, 343 is basically Sonic the Hedgehog. I will lead up to every release full of hype, even though they let me down time and time again. And like with Halo 4, it, it, that was one of my biggest disappointments ever. Halo 5, again, it wasn't that bad. Well, in places it wasn't that bad, but still big disappointment for me coming off the original Bungie trilogy. But seeing Infinite, seeing everything they've done so far, I am so in. They keep posting renders of Master Chief, and they are just perfecting his design. Every time I look at that, I just I get this wave of nostalgia for Halo 2 and Halo 3. And uh, I was going back to watch the previous trailers from uh, E3 2018 and E3 2019. And uh, just listening to the music, the callbacks to Halo 1 and Halo 3, it feels like they really do respect the franchise this time, and I am in. I'm in for Halo again. Yeah, I, I think really when they picked up Halo 4 and then 5, they were building off of that engine that was already there. I mean, it's an old engine now, but now they're working with their, their new engine that apparently they've been developing for a while, the Slip Space engine. Mm. And that, according to them, needed to be built because of how ambitious Halo Infinite is. But if they can go back to, to me, the feel of Halo 3 while still trying to, I guess, modernize. I mean, that's 2007. So even when I'm playing it now on PC, I, I get it. There are some things they can do to modernize it, whether it's the flow of combat. Uh, I, I know people did like Sprint and some of like Halo 5. People liked how fast that game was compared to older Halos. But I still like the purposeful movement of Halo 3, I'll say. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they can still capture that, and they just have a bunch of game modes so that everyone can kind of play Halo as they want. I'm fine with that. I'm just ready for Halo Infinite. Like the campaign, I feel like it's going to be pretty massive. Uh, but the multiplayer, of course, is what I'm really, really looking forward to. But everything they've shown so far outside of gameplay, the build up, I'm on board. I'm it's ready. been really good so far. I'll yeah. agree. Like I think Sprint has, it doesn't necessarily need to be in Halo, but it can be imp implemented well. Uh, the thing I didn't like in 5 was all of the clambering techniques. Being able to just touch a wall and instantly climb it. It takes yeah. a lot away a lot of the traversal techniques that made Halo 2 and 3 so good. Like, the crouch yep. jumping. Make, like, successfully uh, nailing a crouch jump feels good. When, when, when you're just sort of given the liberty of being able to clamber up something, it, it, it takes so much away. Um, it, it, it started to get a little too close to, like, the Call of Duties and stuff. And that's, I think... Mike, Mike, sir. like I, I liked both games back in the day. Halo Three and uh, Modern Warfare were like right at the same time, just about. I liked both of them, but they had distinct feels. And then when we get further and further, Halo Four and Five, it almost felt like Three Four Three was trying to kind of turn it into a Call of Duty a bit. And I was like, uh, I don't know. And that, now it sounds like Master Chief will feel, I guess, heavy. He's always felt heavy, you know, mm. back back in two and three. And all of a sudden he got really light because you're like you said, you're vaulting over things. You're like pulling yourself up here and there. And you're, it, it, eh, I don't know. It felt a little too crazy with someone who's running around in like a ton of armor or something, you know, a literal ton mm -hmm. of armor. So I don't know. That was a little strange to me. Nate, you said I, I should have faith in three, four, three. Yes, you should have faith in 343 because Halo Infinite feels like this is really their Halo. Halo 4 yeah. and 5 kind of felt like they were continuing what Bungie had left for them and they wanted to you know, craft their own story, but they really didn't know the direction or the gameplay direction they wanted to go in. And Halo Infinite, I think, is their true vision of what they want to take this franchise you know, in the direction they want it to go in. And you know, now it's their time to shine. They have to deliver. Microsoft knows they have to deliver. So there's a lot of pressure on 343, but I think they're up for this challenge. And I think they're going to deliver on Thursday at the Microsoft show. Correct me if I'm wrong, but has it been the longest time in between Halo iterations? Because Halo 5 was 2015, right? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has been the longest time. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be five, it'd be five, uh, five years then now. Yeah. And then a lot of it had to do with them 
Uh, obviously, we had the Master Chief Collection getting worked on quite a bit overall, but it's that apparently it's this engine that they've been developing. So if like if it really is that big of a jump, uh, I'm I'm fine with that taking so long. So it's uh, they just got to impress us. It's got to be impressive at this show. Uh, they can't show us like a minute of gameplay. I think they have to show us like half a mission at least. So like eight, nine minutes of just straight up campaign, sit back. We're just going to roll through this level and we're going to show you some cool things. We heard uh, th this grappling hook apparently is in the game. It's a pickup is what we're hearing. I love sort that. Of I love the word pickup. <laughs> if it was part yeah. of your main move set, I would despise <laughs> yeah. that thing. But yes. um, thinking of it like a gravity lift or something like that. I, I'm yep. all for that. But like a lot of things in the campaign will basically end up in the multiplayer. So I'm thinking in my mind, is there going to be like an entire level where Master Chief, rather than trying to just go in guns blazing, is trying to infiltrate uh, some sort of base to do something? And like to me, that makes me start to think of the gameplay could be uh, maybe more interesting in the campaign. It won't be the exact same thing most times where you're basically just running and gunning. Maybe there are missions in the game where you are trying to be a little more stealthy or gathering intel, intel around like your enemies. Uh, that would be cool, like grappling hook around to get into a base without being detected, something like that. Maybe you can observe some of the different enemies uh, kind of just talking back and forth at time. Uh, there's a lot of things I think they could do with just a grappling hook, so it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's cool to think about that. Yeah, and they've tried that kind of mission structure before in the past, kind of. Like in Halo 3, there's in the very first level, there's one point where a bunch of grunts are just sleeping and you have the choice to either take them out silently or just go in guns blazing. But it doesn't really make a difference what you do. So having some kind of like more, uh, I guess, more focused structure to that would be very interesting. Do we know yet? Because I just realized this. We don't even know if, if Halo Infinite is like the old Halos or if this is going to be like a faux open world style game. We don't even, hmm. we don't know that yet, do we? Because it's we don't. labeled Halo Infinite. I assume this is a Halo game they're going to build on for like the next... 15 years like seriously i think this could be like how they are looking at cfds right now as being this game they're just going to continue adding to like halo infinite is not a numbered halo does does that mean that this is going to be a halo that just continues on i mean Possibly game pass. for multiple generations game pass right this is the game that's gonna be pushing the entire service it feels like uh, yes I, I i don't think it makes any sense to just make one iterative halo for game pass um, so does so that mean ahead. we could have a full open kind of open world game where people jump into your game, you do full co-op. It's kind of like, I guess, almost Destiny-like, but it's Halo, and you run missions and all of this. Maybe you get some sort of unlockables in the campaign. Maybe there's a full experience system with it. Like, there's a lot of questions I have for this game, and I'm a little concerned they're not going to be able to answer all of it in just this event, if that's the case. If it's just a straightforward Halo campaign, okay, you have, you know, 14 or 15 levels that you go through. It's a good story. It's interesting. Um, that's fine, but like, I would not mind a jump forward if they do want to have some sort of open world style thing with progression. I think that could be kind of interesting. What are you thinking, Nate? I mean, I'm kind of going into it with the expectation that it is just going to be, you know, kind of the standard Halo. It's going to be a standard first person shooter, but they are going to expand on numerous aspects of it. And they should show a quality demonstration tomorrow, kind of like Spawn had mentioned. If they come with like a 10 minute gameplay demonstration to open the show, they set the tone right there and then of everything they're going to have from that point forward in the showcase. You get people excited. This is the future of Halo. And they could go that open world approach or maybe a faux open world, not necessarily. Like, like Gears like, 5, maybe? Like where yeah, like. That type of approach where you have the illusion that you can do anything, but you're still kind of. You know restricted in overall progression and such and i mean if they can do that and they can nail it they'll be in a really good place for, you know for the franchise moving forward because that's going to excite a lot of people and you know as we know halo infinite is also coming to the xbox one so you know there's going to be a lot of players on current gen systems but it's also the reason people are going to buy the xbox series x so if you can merge both of those player bases into this open world type of game or just have a quality campaign where you can have co-op and then you have that you know pretend you know potentially mammoth size multiplayer let's say you have 32 maybe even 64 players online and this can really be that you know pivotal game for microsoft and you know there's a lot riding on this game but we don't know enough about the gameplay we don't know enough about the campaign I mean, we're probably talking a title that is going to be way more ambitious than we're actually going to get. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, I, I do have faith that 343 is going to deliver a quality experience. Maybe it doesn't live up to the hype that some people are expecting as, you know, as far as the evolution of what the Halo franchise could or should be. But if they can give us a quality first person shooter, which is, you know, arguably something they have not done with their previous two entries. And I think it'll still be, you know, good footing for them moving forward because it will, you know, give goodwill and it will give people some confidence that 343 does have a, you know, vision in mind and they can build off the base of Infinite and then move forward to something grander. Do you... Do you, uh, do you, does everyone think that's how they're going to open the show? Like it's going to be like a countdown and then it goes like, yeah, like the screen goes black and then it's basically Master Chief, his helmet turning on or something, and then mm -hmm. we start the campaign. That's how we, th okay, that's exactly I, I what that I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, all right. That's, I mean, that's how you really get things started, right? Is, uh -huh. is you, you just say, hey, here's our holiday game, let's play it. So, that's, yeah, I, yeah, I think so. All I right. mean, Kalo. When you think of Xbox, you think of Halo. So what better game to open your show with than Halo Infinite? Okay, here's the big question. Do they date the game? Because if you date that game, that means no. that- That dates the console, the right? Comes out. Yeah. yeah, you might as well date the console. <laughs> yeah. Holiday 2020 is all you can slap on it at this point. Or you I just say, so. launching with Xbox Series X this year. Uh -huh. I mean, that's, you know what? That would work too, because all we know right now is Holiday. If they- say or even phil spencer it comes on after the trailer and it's like this game it's gonna be their launch day for the series x that's big too just to say that because then we are like okay we just wait now for when the system is gonna get a date and we'll know halo infinite same day yeah mm -hmm. yeah that works for me yeah that would work too i'm pretty sure they said they're just focusing on games in this presentation so no no actual details on the price or the release date uh are you expecting anything else apart from games any other kind of drops or is this literally just game after game after uh, game Nate, let them know what's what's the big drop. I think what's it's the big drop. Uh, I think it's just a software showcase as they put ah. it. They want to focus on games. They want to sell That's you on the Xbox drop. Series X. They uh, <laughs> they uh, they removed that twelve month Xbox Live Gold thing. They Nate, what did. happened there? But yeah. I, I don't think we're going to hear about that in July. I think that could be something in their like their August presentation where they've kind okay. of talked about maybe in August we'll talk about a little more of the business side of things. So I would expect that's where they would talk about of. Oh, why are we dropping Xbox Live Gold purchases from our web store? But not right now. Let's focus on the games, sell you on the system, and all the excellent games you're going to be playing on the Xbox Series X this year and you know next year and maybe even you know beyond into 2022. Get that hype. You have to replicate what Sony did at their event. Sure. And just focus on the software. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. And they, they confirm that uh, X Clouds can be part of Game Pass Ultimate. So I guess if you're getting rid, uh -huh. if you're potentially getting rid of Xbox Live Gold, then you're not you're not really giving more value to Game Pass Ultimate, but you are getting rid of the Xbox Live Gold and kind of replacing it, which it, it kind of adds up. If they remove the barrier more and more for people to just be like, oh, I guess I will sign up for Game Pass. Mm -hmm. That that helps Microsoft big time because then they the whole point is to come up with a subscription service that they can put alongside of other parts of Microsoft, which is like Microsoft Word and Office and all of this. Right, those are all like subscription services now. So yeah. If you got millions and millions of people on Game Pass, it's it's a little easier to go to Microsoft and be like, hey, we should buy that studio. Look how many people are on Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I want to ask you both a question. What would you rate the PlayStation event that we had uh, recently with, with Demon's Souls and Horizon and Sackboy's Big Adventure and all those other games? <laughs> what kind of, out of 10, what would you have given that? Uh, I would mm. give that one, I'm going to give that one a solid 8 is what I'll give it. What about yes. you, Nate? Yeah, I mean, an 8 sounds fair. I was thinking around an 8, 8.5. A 7.5 crossed my mind, but I think that's kind of being a little harsh. But yeah, I think an 8 is fair for what they showed. I mean, between Demon Souls, Ratchet & Clank, Spider-Man, even mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, factor in the marketing message, you know, debacle there a little bit. It was a quality show. They had a lot of first-party exclusives. They also had good third-party reveals with Resident Evil Village. Yep. So I would, yeah, an eight sounds pretty solid for what Sony had. But we know, we know what else they could have put in there, though. That's the thing. Like, like it, that that show could have been like a nine, almost a ten. Yeah. If they decided we're not even gonna have an August event, everything's just going in here. That mm -hmm. that could have been a wild event, like based on some of the rumors around their next event. So. Right. So, what are you from this conference from the Xbox event? Are you expecting that to be as good, or do you think Xbox are gonna spread things out more? Ooh. Uh, I mean, I think Microsoft is going to at least match what we saw from Sony. Uh -huh. 
I think the only area that Microsoft might lag behind is going to be software diversity and range. Because we saw Sony go from like the hardcore of the hardcore with Demon Souls yep. to the family friendly Ratchet and Clank. I think Microsoft is going to be more towards the former where they're going to have more of these core experiences like Halo Infinite. That I mean, it does have mass appeal, but I don't think Microsoft is going to really leverage that family friendly software side. They're going to be more core, more like I'll say the 18 to 35 year old male audience. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. They would have to have some weird, they'd have to have like a Viva Pinata or like a Banjo Kazooie there to, to yeah, kind of match sure. something like not. I, I don't even know if that would match Ratchet and Clank right now because Banjo has been kind of on the shelf for a while. And Viva Pinata is probably only played by a small amount of gamers who are, you know, playing the series would be playing the series X anyway. Mm hmm. For me, I personally feel like Halo Infinite is a bigger deal than almost any game that Sony showed. And not to undermine Sony, I think they had a brilliant lineup. Spider-Man, in particular, is a huge IP. But just personally speaking, uh, Halo could potentially be a much better game to me than any of it, any of anything that Sony showed. I would have to... I mean, I have to see what more Horizon, because, mm -hmm. like, Horizon could work to redefine open-world games on next-gen hardware. Uh... Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I'd have to see because I, I still I need to see the direction of Halo Infinite. But I think that Halo Infinite, if that's what Sony has as Spider Man, they're they're like you know lost legacy style you know level of Spider Man. Mm. Uh, and Halo Infinite would be the biggest game this holiday, uh, which would in turn give them the yeah. biggest launch title. So yeah, at that point they would at least have the biggest title going into 2020's holiday. Because mm. it's it's tough to really gauge Halo Infinite right now. I mean, Halo is still a major brand in gaming like i said earlier when you think of xbox you think of halo but the halo franchise has also kind of struggled to have that big must-have title over the you know basically the entirety of the xbox one generation and i don't think the franchise has lost any of its luster per se but sony has done well to make their new ip in the ps4 be spectacles for their hardware like horizon zero dawn or spider-man so when those games come to the ps5 you know, they're going to have a lot of attention. And that's really where 343 just has to nail that initial introduction of Halo Infinite at this showcase. Sell us immediately on it. And then you do have that must have mammoth size game that could potentially, you know, trump anything that Sony has this holiday. But, you know, it remains to be seen. We have to see that gameplay demonstration. We need to see what 343's vision truly is for the product. Yep. yep. Uh huh. Yep. Do we uh what what else, what else do we think is going to be here then? I was going to say let's not rest too much on Halo because there is more yeah. to Xbox than just that one IP. <laughs> um, we can just list off the obvious ones. Like of course Forza is going to be there. Uh, oh yeah, oh oh yeah. yeah there's Forza no doubt about that. Heavy. They might even roll a car out on on a stage somewhere. <laughs> Phil Spencer uh, just drives out in one. He just drives into his house with it, just blows through the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to write too much on Forza either because that's too obvious. But um, I do think Rare's always an interesting one. We know of one of their games being Everwild, which was shown off during last year's uh, XO event that they showed it off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and we don't really know much about that. We were just sort of shown this colorful forest filled with these fictional animals, and it looked like it was some kind of co-op or multiplayer game. But mm -hmm. I didn't really get any impression of that. So I'd like to see more of Everwild, but do you think that's Rare's only game that they're going to show? So I I think I'm actually concerned. I don't know if I don't know if Everwild will be at this event, to be honest, because it it sounded like it was a ways off. And Sea of Thieves is now, so like I feel like they might show some new stuff for Sea of Thieves going into the because that people forgot about Sea of Thieves, but it just hit 15 what it's 15 big. million players or something. Mm. Some crazy. It's always at like one of the top games on Twitch or something. I I forgot about Sea of Thieves myself, but I double checked it before I went on, and I'm like, wow, this is still really it's, it's actually grown heavily <laughs> mm. so like they they might want to step back and say okay yeah rare is doing everwild we'll save that maybe for another presentation that we do because it's still kind of early on let's talk about sea of thieves and i know there'll probably be some people who are like ah oh, sea of thieves i mean it's big it's big right now so i at least understand why they would do that and who knows maybe they just want to show it off on the series x i was hoping that rare might have something else outside of everwild but they're doing everwild and they're doing Sea of Thieves. I, I I don't know if they would have something else mm -hmm. outside of those. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Nate? Rare is really tough to predict right now. I mean, I'm not even sure how big of a company Rare yeah, I was is gonna today. Say. And like as we've mentioned, uh, Sea of Thieves is a massive project that has tons of players. They're continually updating it, and I 
definitely expect that they're going to bring that game to the Xbox Series X, and tomorrow would be a fine time to announce those plans. Maybe, maybe even as a launch game. It says about 200 employees. Right. Okay, we, so we do know have... that um, they've already stated Series X is going to be backwards compatible with every Xbox One game, excluding yep. the Kinect titles. So, Sea of Thieves <laughs> is kind of just expected. <laughs> yeah, it probably yep. gets some enhancements for yeah. it. So, like, you know, if you've got Everwild, I think Rare does show up with one more game, and if I had to attach a title to it, and this won't happen, my hopes is that it would be a Viva Pinata. It's not a bad idea. I mean, I'd yeah. be alright with Viva Pinata. That'd be cool. Viva Pinata was an excellent game on the Xbox 360. So, so wait, you'd have them do Viva Pinata instead of Banjo? I, I could have sworn you were going to say Banjo, man. I thought you were going to say that because Banjo was in Smash, he's kind of, he's, he's, he has a lot more eyes on him I now. Mean, but yeah, instead, you go Viva Pinata. They've got to, they've got to take advantage of this Banjo hype in Smash. They I have uh, to, right? That's true. He, he is in Smash, and they should capitalize on that Banjo. It doesn't even have Banjo to come hype. out. It doesn't even have to come out like next year, technically. Banjo, they could just be like, "Hey." We're working on a banjo game. It's happening, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they just, and then yeah. it just rolls past. It doesn't even have to come out in the next twelve months. Like it could be like a holiday game next year or something. But uh, like, you got to take advantage of the banjo hype, right? Yeah. That'd be a massive misstep. You have you like do. a five second teaser, a black screen, just <laughs> go, hop, and then just twenty twenty two. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe that happens. I mean, between banjo or you know, Viva Pinata, I'd be happy with either of those games yeah. coming from Rare tomorrow, as long as they don't come back with Grabbed by the Ghoulies 2. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll be happy if they do have a second project, you know, coming to the Xbox Series think, X. So do you think they could have another company in, in one of their other studios work on Banjo with support from or guidance from Rare? Because Rare said they had no problem with other developers working on those IPs that they work to create as long as they can, you know, as long as it keeps the core idea of that game. Do you think that would be something they'd let, like, Double Fine, for example, start work on Banjo? I was going to say a similar thing. Like, we have Battletoads in the making right now with another developer, and Killer Instinct, much like Sea of Thieves, has just gone under the radar as this hit. That's that's one of the biggest fighting games of the generation. They need a new They need a new Killer Instinct. The problem is, uh, I think Double Helix worked on it originally. The, uh, Amazon did. owns them now, and then Iron Galaxy has been working on it since then, so... Maybe they had Iron Galaxy work on the next Killer Instinct or something. I don't know. That 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 would be a big reveal because you have a fighting game like Killer Instinct, you have a shooter like Halo, you got something like a Viva Pinata or a Banjo, you have a racing game like Forza Eight. All of a sudden, Nate, you're talking about how Sony had a pretty diverse lineup. I mean, that's that's a pretty diverse lineup there mm -hmm. going yeah, forward, it is. you know, with the event. But that there's a lot of hope in those predictions. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these are probably pie in the sky predictions right now, but uh. Well, I, I will tell you one we will see that could be kind of diverse is I feel like Psychonauts 2 will be here and they might even throw next year's, you know, the, just some sort of window early 2021 or something on it for the next Psychonauts. That would be cool. Is that big, though? Is that big for an Xbox no. showcase for the Series X? Because Psychonauts is no, a is not. a known entity. Yeah, it's not really that big. I mean, it has its legion of fans, uh -huh. but it's one of those games I'd be fine like, oh, you show the trailer. And you just move on from it. I don't need a like. I don't need. I don't need Sweeney or <laughs> is that his, is that is that his name? No, uh, Schaefer, to come uh, out and give me like a five minute explanation of what he's doing with the games. Like, cool. You showed the trailer. You put like twenty twenty one on it, and then we're going to the next thing. Like, it's just it's a it's a good game to have in your catalog. Yes. It's just not one of those games you need to highlight and make a big deal of. Mm -hmm. No. But I, I think I think if you just kind of throw it in there, that would be interesting to kind of just have that alongside of the Forza and the Halo. Just like I said, something yeah, different that's thrown in there, right? It's a um, sizzle here, real game. Here's how you get the weebs happy. One sec. To get the weebs happy, what you got to do? Black screen. <laughs> silence. And it's back. Lost Odyssey okay. Remake. Okay, yes. I... I, I don't. I, uh, I, yes. I would love to see them do something with Lost Odyssey, either uh, <laughs> like some sort of. Well, the thing is, it's backwards compatible and it looks fine on the mm. Xbox as it is. You play it now, it, it looks great. I just, if they want to do some sort of sequel or or something else in that world that's not even called Lost Odyssey, it's just it's a different title, but it's still in that kind of lore and that universe they built there. That would be really cool. They need. They need to. I think part of this, and Phil Spencer's talked about it, some sort of Japanese developer studio support here like i think they need to bring something in and unfortunately it sounds like elden ring will not be at this event 
So that yeah. was kind of one I was like, oh, Elden Ring will definitely be there. It doesn't sound like it. So that's no, weird. That, yeah, that report came out today where Elden Ring is not expected to be shown at the Microsoft event. And it seemed like a you know prime place to have it, especially if you're Microsoft, like Sony had Demon Souls. What better than, you know, to have Elden Ring at your event? And, you know, that's not going to happen. So, and Phil Spencer did talk. We're going to have great Japanese support. He's very happy with what he has from Japan Studios at this event. And, you know, you kind of wonder, what does that mean Is it exactly? Does it mean Fantasy Star Online? Or it's hard to bigger? say. I mean, look at Game Pass right now. There, there are some big Japanese games on there. The entirety of Kingdom Hearts, yeah. the entirety of Yakuza that, um, that, that's yep. on Xbox is on Game Pass right now. Uh, it'd be really cool and something that would anger Switch fans as well. What if Persona uh -oh. made its way to Xbox? <laughs> That would be a big deal if they if they rolled up to Atlas, back the truck up, <laughs> and said, "Hey, we're bringing Man. we're bringing Persona Five. It's coming over." And guess what? It's on Game Pass today. Uh huh. That would be that huge. would be a big deal. Uh, but wow. all right, <laughs> that would be the moment where it's like, okay, Microsoft isn't messing around with this. But what <laughs> if they decided to go knocking on Platinum's door and they were like, "Hey." scale bound no 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 no. let's do something somewhat realistic <laughs> Let, <laughs> hey let's let's make vanquish 2. oh all right and and let's show that off right here right now would you the, would you want to vanquish 2 without shinji mikami's involvement that would be interesting uh hmm could they mm. uh, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's, that's a good point that's the thing. Like people don't remember that was his game before he like he worked on that at Platinum and then he went to do Tango. And I would assume that's why we've never gotten a sequel to Vanquish because they don't want to do it without Mikami or it really didn't sell all that well. So it's probably not a good idea. But I could see them go to Platinum and uh, you know I don't know if I could see them go to Platinum. Actually, they had such a bad breakup over Scalebound. I don't know if either party is really that hey, invested man. in Money, money solves a lot of wounds. <laughs> what if you take something that sounds like Mikami um, and just bring over Okami? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's been a lot of talks about Okami too. Um, it doesn't sound like it's happening because, I mean, Platinum would have to make some sort of deal with Capcom for that to happen. And uh, mm -hmm. talks were quite recent about that not happening. But imagine the reaction if, if Microsoft managed Ooh. to net Okami too. That would be, I mean, it'd be really cool. I mean, if we really think of like all the Japanese developers out there, especially like the big developers, I mean, who can we really see showcasing a brand new game at Microsoft's, you know, stage this week? Because we already had Resident Evil 8 at Sony's show. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, can Capcom really have anything else that Microsoft could have secured? Like, it's not going to be a new Monster Hunter. We know it's not Resident Evil. Um, it's very unlikely to be a Street Fighter game. Here's so a Capcom, boring one. Uh, Dead Rising. <laughs> they are always uh, yeah. nursing a Dead Rising exclusive. That's true. It could be something. Yeah, Dead Rising would make sense. Uh -huh. How do you make that exciting, though? I think I feel like Dead Rising has been just beaten into this stale what state. They, uh, what if they got? What if they got a, a sequel to Blue Dragon? There you go. Ooh. Blue Dragon Two. Or bring back, uh, bring back the cheesy like boss theme, and I'm all in. <laughs> oh man, we're just trying, we're just trying to figure out something because I don't, I don't think Tales of Arise will be here either because that got pushed back. Right. That got delayed to some like who knows when. They're just like that's not coming out for a while. That would have been a good one to drop there just to show it. Oh, well, here's man, a big one. Yeah. Big um, Final Fantasy VII remake. Is that possible? Okay, that that would be a big announcement if microsoft did walk out there and say we have final fantasy 7 remake coming to the xbox series x early in 2021 right you know because we know it's only a one-year exclusive deal mm -hmm. to the playstation 4 so we do have to entertain that this is a reality this could happen would that be too soon though if like they have because i mean they sony gets a one-year exclusive on it do you think that means they also have to wait until like a month before it would even be able to be come out to be even be announced like is that what you think that'd be part of their contract talks there i'm honestly not I, sure I'm, I'm not yeah i'm not i guess it depends that kinda, on how that kind of kills up. the idea of the one year exclusivity if like you just announce it just immediately announce it for another system you know like months <laughs> later it's like oh uh, well i mean capcom did do that with resident evil 4 on the gamecube like yeah, it's exclusive to gamecube then like yeah, it's also coming to ps2 mm -hmm. thanks guys mm -hmm. that's true uh, any chance of a Sega IP coming up? Because on the original Xbox, there were a couple. A Crazy Taxi 3, Panzer Dragoon Auto, and Jet Set Radio Future. I feel like out of those three, Jet Set Radio has a pretty good chance of returning. 
You know, it, it does. There's been a lot of Jet Set Radio talk on Twitter recently. I've seen that. I wonder if they would really. I wonder if they would really do that. I mean, it'd, it'd be a diverse statement. Like, no other game quite looks like Jet Set Radio. It would. It would. That, hmm. I mean, I'd buy it, or I'd buy it, or I'd play it on Game Pass. But like that, I'm trying to think of the impact that would have. I think that'd get a lot of excitement online. Mm. Cra- yeah, because it's, it's definitely yeah. more than Crazy Taxi. It would get excitement. What if it was? Gun Valkyrie. Wow. Okay, you're going like that. Going what, that was on the original Xbox, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I I think so. Wow. <laughs> he brought that to the original Xbox. I mean, what if they went that? What if they just came with a bunch of you know classic old Sega games and they said we're adding these? You know, it is it is so hard to figure out like Microsoft Japanese studio support. It mm. is so difficult. <sighs> It really yeah, is. We're, it, we're naming yeah. some weird games right now to get oh, on, we this, on this system. Here's uh, one. Oh, cool. I'm, sure, I'm sure John's probably thought of this. Back on the original Xbox, one of the biggest Xbox games was from Team Ninja. It was Ninja Gaiden mm-hmm. and then Ninja Gaiden Black. We have not had a new Ninja Gaiden since Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge. <laughs> right. I think it's time. I think it's time. I would you love know what? That. Yes, Ninja Gaiden 4 would be awesome. I am mm-hmm. on board with that one. Uh, especially if they can have it out next year. That would be a big announcement, 2021 on it, something we haven't heard about. Okay, I'm going with that. I'm on board with Ninja Gaiden 4, Nate. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the one. Absolutely. That is the big announcement. Ninja Gaiden Black is one of the best games of its kind. I love that so much. It still looks great on the Xbox. It does. Like the Xbox One X, you load it up, looks awesome. So yeah, yes, Ninja Gaiden 4. Let's do it. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, that, any that other crazy Japanese, Japanese predictions? Are we done with that, or are there, oh, have we not quite I got mean, out of system? I unless, mean, they, unless they're going to localize Mother of Three, yeah, that's, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, we mentioned Gun Valkyrie. I think we got pretty crazy <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, one more Sega game. Skies of Arcadia. Is there any chance, Nate? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I want there to be a chance. But... Oh, man. It'd be such an odd platform to choose to bring it back to. It was. I, but make it happen. You know, we didn't even entertain this. Sega kept saying they want to talk about Sonic, you know, around the 20th of every month. And we haven't heard anything about Sonic in July. And this event's July 23rd. Could the next Sonic game be at Microsoft Show? A remake of this one. No. Show the capability of the SSD. Finally get rid of those loading times. <laughs> <laughs> well, what other what other third party announcements think will be there? Because they said there there will be some third party stuff there as well as first party. Mm-hmm. I, I I have I have one. I think there could be a, a slight teaser towards the mm-hmm. Batman game. That's it's been a while. I feel, if I, I feel like we've been hearing that, that about that game for so long now. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. going to be fully revealed uh, in, midway through August, third week of right. August. They're going to have a full reveal on it during that that WB event that's going to happen, but. Why not take advantage of the, the big stage and have some sort of tease, whether it's just like something with Batman, a uh, quick like cinematic minute trailer or something, get people hyped for it. Because apparently it is being developed for next gen stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I will, I will counter Batman with the Harry Potter RPG. Okay, I'm okay with that. Both of them are getting revealed apparently third week of August. So you, I think you can go either way because they're both going to be talked about fully there. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you take advantage of this if you're WB? For sure. Yeah. Uh, speaking of WB, one thing I had written down is: Do you think there'll be a chance of another studio acquisition? And do you ah. think there's a possibility that WB could? Ah. Be okay. Good. 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 <laughs> I I I kind of think they could announce a studio. It sounds crazy, but I think it's possible because we're talking about them doing games a lot here. What if they showed a game and then said the studios joining the Microsoft quote unquote family? Uh-huh. The problem with WB. They wanted way too much money for that. Oh, they went like it was the price for that was like four and a half billion or something for for all of that. And I mean, it's a lot of studios, but if they would be willing to piecemeal some of the studios out, maybe then like at that point, I would say go get NetherRealm. Just go Mm. pick them up. Mm -hmm. Uh, That would be the one out of all the studios. I would say go pick up NetherRealm for Microsoft. Uh, I because I that's Ed Boon Studio and I, I feel like they own Mortal Kombat IP. I'm pretty sure they do. I'm pretty sure right? you're right. That's Ed Boon Studio. I mean, maybe there's another partner in there too that's like part of it, but like I feel like they own at least a controlling share of Mortal Kombat. That would be good. And who knows, maybe NetherRealm can even help out a bit with Killer Instinct. Mm. They have the experience mm. to work on fighting games like that, so why not? Um, but that's if they could do that, if they could go to WB and say, hey, 
or, or AT&T companies selling it and all that. They're like, hey, uh, we just want NetherRealm. Can we do that? Although it sounds like they wanted to sell the entire thing off. And once you get EA and take two in there, then it becomes a bidding war. And uh, who knows what happens at that point. But uh, that's that would be a, one of those studios would be the one that I would really look towards. Although they could also announce some small indie studio that joins as well. So. Mm. Hey, maybe I mean, maybe they picked up like a small up and coming Japanese studio. I mean, they did buy good. Ninja Theory. And that kind of shocked people. So. That's a good point. So oh, that's I mean, a good, oh man, that would be interesting if they. Mm, yeah, I, I, mean, I I don't know who it could be, but I mean, they did say they were looking into European and the Asian development scene for you know potential acquisitions because I remember there was a rumor going around that they were going to buy um, CD Project Red. Oh <laughs> my gosh, I, I can't ridiculous. See that. Yeah, yeah, they're worth like four billion dollars. Yeah, so odd. it means. Their like sell price would probably be double that, and I don't think Microsoft's dropping ten billion dollars. Right, to a and CD developer. Project Red get investments from the Polish government. Uh, they, they, yeah. they're not going to be sold. <laughs> so I think if we do see an acquisition, be either European or Asian based, and I mean that's a really tough two markets to predict what studio Microsoft could. So I'm not expecting any stu studio acquisition to be announced at this event. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, that's fair. All right, Nate, any uh, other big announcements or predictions you think are going to be shown off here? Fable. Yes. Obvious right, one, yeah, good. okay. We're closing it out. We're I, I say obvious one. We went um, an entire generation with no Fable, kind of. That Legends was there partially the beginning of Xbox One, yeah. but it just it sizzled into nothingness. Okay. So, so yeah. the word is, the word is, All right. Nate can back me up, that <laughs> Fable looks absolutely insane. Yes, that yes. is the word this going the around word. that. All right. That Playground has made an absolutely gorgeous game, and Fable is supposed to just like blow minds. And if they can drop a trailer where you just look at it and say, oh my God, that's exactly, you know, that's next gen with this trailer for Fable, it could sell, you know, a lot of people on the Xbox Series X because yeah. a Fable. We've talked about it a bit before, like Fable definitely needs to be completely reinvented. It can't mm -hmm. be that whimsical, weird English humor anymore. You can't be kicking chickens. That, that's part again. of Lionhead, right? That's that's their identity yeah. for Fable. Yeah, that was yeah. Lionhead's identity. And now if they can go that Witcher Skyrim type of route where you yeah. still have the fan of the elements, but it's more grounded. It's like, you know, it has that Witcher element to it and it's just gorgeous. That's going to be the game where people are just going to stop and pause and say, "Yep, did you see and Fable?" I bet you. I wonder if they're going to. You think they're going to call it just Fable, and it becomes more of a service-based kind of game where it's a game they build not. on constantly, like Sea of Thieves. You think it's something like that? No, I hope it's a self-contained experience. It has a meaty, you know, adventure campaign, and make it this huge project. Just make it like. The Witcher 3 or Skyrim, where you just have hundreds of hours of gameplay, tons of quests. Maybe you can customize your character in you know, different ways where the story is altered. But if they can make this that, you know, defining experience where it just completely, you know, set the generation, redefine the generation as this game and make the Xbox Series X about something like Fable, it can work in their favor because we have been waiting for a new Fable for a long time. And people want that type of game to come back. I know some people say, oh, the IP has been dead for so long. Does it even matter anymore? And yes, there's a lot of people who remember Fable. The name still carries weight. Mm. It still carries value. And it's time for Microsoft to cash in and you know profit off that. You were touching on this, Nate, as well. Um, Fable, Fable 3 was so long ago now. And open world mm -hmm. gaming has, has evolved so much since then. We've had, we have, we've had Breath of the Wild, we've had, we've had Horizon, we've had Spider-Man. Uh, open world design has changed so drastically since Fable 3, and they can't just follow those same old design templates. And they can't even... I don't think they can even be like a lot of other mo uh, modern games right now. Like, look at Assassin's Creed. I don't think you can take Fable <laughs> and just follow that template. It's got to be something that really evolves over that. And uh, just... It's got to distance itself from other open world games in some capacity. Yeah, and... Playground is talented yep. creating those type of worlds. Mm -hmm. And that's, we've seen it with the Forza. Oh, Forza franchise. Horizon 4 is phenomenal, isn't yeah. it? The way that they've and that's on the Xbox One S. 
it still looks amazing and it's on you know this mechanical hard drive where they're trying to load the world in completely while you're going around mm -hmm. i mean uh, opening up to the series x because it does sound like fable isn't going to be ready for a little while but it's going to be specifically a next gen title it won't be on nate's old vcr no. uh then yeah, then that means <laughs> that they can kind of take some of the quote unquote i guess the um some some of the limiting factors off when they're trying to develop for an older hard drive or something as well and i got i think the idea is they're going to try to build this open world that is like seamless we've heard uh according to rumors that it's going to be like almost photorealistic they use what photogrammetry and all of that so yeah. like it's it sounds like this is going to be one of those moments that blow people away if it, if it all comes together like people are yeah. saying it will. So and that's the thing. This trailer, all they have to say is this is in engine, and it could be the best looking next gen game we've seen, you know, to that point. Because we saw some quality looking games from Sony, we saw the Unreal Engine five, you know, tech mm -hmm. demo, but Fable could just push that envelope further. That might be the game where Microsoft is able to lean back and say. This is the difference between us and the PlayStation 5. Mm. Right there. Because, right. I mean, we saw Hellblade 2. And, I mean, Hellblade 2 looks phenomenal. But yep. I think Fable's going to push things even further. That's one yeah. aspect I don't yeah. feel like people are really paying attention to. And maybe that's because they haven't been given an example yet. But technically, the Series X does one-up the PlayStation 5 in terms of raw hardware. PlayStation 5 mm. has a fast SSD, of course. There's pros and cons to each mm. console. But just showing what the Series X can do will really create an in interesting conversation. Um, and I, I hope there's at least a few games that really showcase that. Um, my, my, my main worry, and I, I know how uh, flexible these games will be, my main worry is that Xbox One will be holding some of these back to, to some extent. Um, mm -hmm. Especially in terms of the SSD. Yes. I, I, would, I, would, I would think that there will be some... I would say concerns about that because they'd have to figure out how certain parts of the game will work. We've talked about before how games this generation will have these moments where you have to squeeze through a little passage mm -hmm. because they have to load the rest of the world in front of you before you get there. And you still see that in like Ghost Tsushima, for example, we're playing that, I'm playing that. There are moments where you have to kind of sidle your way through a little spot so it can load something on the other side, the Final Fantasy VII Remake where they even slowed you down walking. Those are things that will probably have to be incorporated in the older games, but might not be as obvious in the Series X. I, apparently, it's not as big of a deal because of what they are running at Microsoft, what Game Core with their with their games that are coming out. So, what we heard Phil Spencer talk about how there are like sliders or settings that make it a little easier for developers. But I mean, Nate, we talked about this. How many systems are they going to make Halo Infinite for? Oh, yeah, that's thing. yeah the <laughs> xbox one vcr xbox one s xbox series x xbox one x x cloud roommate, xbox lockhart yeah. yeah x cloud it's a lot of platforms there. i mean that's a lot of development profiles yeah and microsoft has gone out of the way to say hey it's similar to developing for a low-end pc xbox series x is just the ultra settings we can do it and I mean, I still think in the back of Microsoft's mind, it's, it's just marketing speak of saying we're not abandoning the systems out there. But they're looking I mean, they're forward gearing, to it, though. <laughs> yeah, they're gearing <laughs> up to abandoning them. They've already dis, you know, discontinued production of the Xbox One X. And it's just kind of like, hey, Halo Infinite has been in development a long time. We want to recoup as much of the cost as we can sure. on the Xbox One. And, you know, maybe we just don't have a lot of first party output in that first 12 months, but by 2022, you know, bye bye, everything we're publishing from that point forward is going to be exclusive to Xbox I mean, Series if you X. Have, if you have Lockhart out there and it's $300, for example, that's a bit easier to for people to, you know, upgrade to. That's $200 less than the Xbox One X was when I bought that. So it's like, mm, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not too bad to upgrade at that point. Um, so, I, I mean, yeah, would you give them a year and a half to phase out the Xbox One X development for the most part? That's what I would expect. I mean, yeah. it's not like Microsoft was really all that invested in the Xbox One after, what would you say, probably Halo 5 came out, aside from a couple of Gears of War games and Sea of Thieves. So 
they kind of seem like they wanted to get away from the talker for a while. Yeah, doesn't it? It almost feels like Phil Spencer's been like, eh, that's Don Matrix system. It's like, uh, I kind of want to... Xbox One kind of feels like they're Wii U, and they're just like, we have to get to the next thing. I bet you it felt great for him to be like, yeah, we're not supporting those Kinect games on the Xbox One Series X. Mm -hmm. Leave those things behind. I mean, (laughs) it feels like for a long time they've been building towards the future. They've been uh, announcing studio acquisitions for years now, uh, during multiple E3s. And it just feels like everything they've been doing with Halo Infinite, with the studios, with uh, the, t- the small teasers for Series X, it's all been like leading up to this one culmination. And I, I have more faith now in Xbox than I have in years. I'm really excited mm-hmm. for this. Um, Same. I, I've been saying to people for a long time now, do not discount Microsoft and the Xbox Series X. And people laughed at me saying, why do you have such blind faith? And they hit rock bottom with the Xbox One and you have no place to go but up after that. And hmm. Phil Spencer, he's a smart man and he's going to take the Xbox Series X and Microsoft into bold new directions. And I think his gamble is going to pay off in a significant way for them. And we're going to see the first signs of this on Thursday. Absolutely. So, w- there, there are two studios we didn't mention here today, and I'm wondering if you guys think they're going to save it for, like, the August. We assume they're going to have another event before the launch of the Series X, right? We hear that Sony's going to have an event in August. Yeah. Maybe M- Microsoft does one in September leading into it. Do you think they're going to save the, the really the two big studios we didn't mention? I'm not even really talking about, like, Undead Labs, who did, like, State of the K or anything like that, or World's <laughs> Edge, that's doing Age of Empires. But, like, uh, I'm thinking more or less of obsidian who has an rpg that they're creating right now mm-hmm. um yeah and uh and the initiative which the initiative is apparently not going to be here which is a shame because i would like to either dispel the perfect dark rumors or just completely back them and say oh yeah, yeah perfect dark yes uh but do you think they're going to save obsidian's um... new rpg and the initiatives game as uh big send like big send-offs rolling towards the the holiday for the series x as coming soon games down the road I guess for this topic, I won't pontificate too much on it. I'll do do single word answers. Initiative, no. Obsidian's new RPG, yes. Uh, I feel very similar about um, the Perfect Dark rumors. I feel like Perfect Dark could exist. It'd be awesome if it does. But I I don't feel like it's necessarily the console debut title. I think they can hang on to this one for a while, (laughs) and it can continue momentum later on. Uh, As for Obsidian... Yeah, I think that there's a big chance of that happening. The Outer Worlds okay. was, I mean, it had a, they have a lot of goodwill after that game. It was a great title, and for me, Speak. sorry, go, go ahead. Did you see the Outer Worlds website? I uh, have. I think it was this morning or yesterday. They they have some teaser up for something coming, and I was wondering if they would Ooh. announce DLC here at this event. Maybe. That, that'd be really cool they did. Yeah, they could do that. Mm, I'm hoping for something there. more than DLC. If I'm honest, though, like DLC mm. would be cool, but something else, something brand new their new rpg yeah i hope so it'd be it'd be great if they did bring that because it would just show that microsoft is committed to bringing single player experiences to the xbox series x which is something that they were criticized heavily for in the xbox one because they shifted their focus to multiplayer so hard and people are like we want single player games and they're like well we don't have any in development because we thought you guys wanted multiplayer games and now you know if they show up with fable a new obsidian rpg halo with a quality campaign it feels like they're going back to that early Xbox 360 original Xbox days, and that's what mm. fans want. Do you, know, do you know how we go back to that, Nate, the early 360 days? I have another one written down here for third party. I think it's my <laughs> last one here. Call of Duty 2020 unveiled mm. at the Xbox event. They have a demo up on the shop right now. Mm. People managed to launch it, and it comes up Black Ops CIA, and that is on the Microsoft Store right now. It would make sense, except for the fact that Call of Duty has been partnered with Sony for yes, so long. That's the that, thing that's, that's interesting. The, yeah, that's I, the drop. Yeah. I can't see it happening at the Microsoft mm. event unless Microsoft came in with a lot more money to Activision and said, yeah. we want Call of Duty now. But I, yeah, I don't see that one happening, though. It would be cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Maybe they save it for the August event with Sony or something. Yeah. All right. So, any final oh. predictions before we wrap up? Hmm. Final prediction, Nate. Um, we already used the, we already used up the Fable card, so we there you go. Final they close out, they, wait, they close out with Fable, right? That's where we're going. With? I think that's the idea. Start with Halo, Open close with, yeah. with Fable. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. That mm. makes sense for them. Um, final prediction: they will announce 
Master Chief as Smash Fighter. Yeah, the next Smash, Smash Fighter. Sakurai DLC. comes out. <laughs> he comes out waving to the crowd. In a Forza then, car. Yeah, <laughs> drives out in the Forza car and says, Forza car is a new assist trophy. And Master Chief is joining Smash later this year. I'm in for mm, it. Okay. Okay. Final prediction. Scalebound's coming back as a Series X exclusive. I think mine has a better chance of being <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, after discussing all this, I'm I'm really excited for this show. But I'm wondering. I asked you at the beginning where you thought um, the PlayStation conference rested in terms of a ten scale, and you both pretty much said eight. Um, what are you <laughs> thinking? This is going to rest at. Hmm. I. Oh, the, okay. Man. Well, if they if they have everything we said, it's going to be like a nine. But uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's going to come down to that. I think some of the third party support because we kind of figure what's happening with with first party so if they have a big surprise from a third party that's like really shocking they could pull off a nine but i'm i think i'm gonna look back on this and be like okay they match sony with an eight most likely mm -hmm. yeah i'm expecting them to basically come in pound for pound with sony maybe if they do have a big third party exclusive or big third party reveal that's timed exclusive it might push them to like an 8.5 or so but, you know, if they can come in at an 8 and they can match Sony, that's really good for Microsoft, especially after their stumble with their next-gen showcase back in May. And, May and everyone Let's pretend like, that didn't happen. This this uh, is the proper right. debut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if they can come out with a really strong show here and they could match Sony pound for pound, they're going to they're gonna be in a really good position and they're going to have a lot of momentum behind them. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I messed up my final prediction. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. New Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Okay, we're good. Completely Ooh. uncensored. No censorship yes. at all. They don't care. Throw it out there. Yep. <laughs> I'm here for it. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, Nate, where can we find you? They can find me on Twitter at NateTheHate, followed by the number two, and on YouTube at NateTheHate. And I also have my other channel, which is Direct Feed Games. You can find direct feed footage of Switch games, Xbox One, PS4 games. I hope to have a crisis comparison Ooh. up sometime this week if I get crisis before the xbox show otherwise it'll be a very hectic day um what about you spawn you can find me on spawn wave media i talk about video games on the internet you know what game explain does that too so if you want <laughs> that you can also subscribe to us <laughs> subscribe to everyone here and uh we'll be live streaming the xbox conference on the day so if you want to see some live reactions to that you can i'm sure you guys are probably going to be covering it extensively as well yes. so check yes. everyone out all right. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye.